好，去到二零一三年嘅第八条题目啦，就系、是、生态系统嘅题目啦。今次咧，我哋想去研究咧，就系岩岸上面两款生物啦 ，A 同 B 咧，佢哋嘅分布同埋风度。咁咩叫风度呢？咁好多同学咧都唔系咁识解嘅。其实就即系丰富程度，简单啲嚟讲，即系多与少啦。咁而家咧，成个 table 咧解一解先。咩叫做喺个岩岸嘅后方咁样数到落去近个水面呢？其实岩岸嘅后方就系呢度。咁咪数翻八米啦，一二三四五六七八，去到第八。八米咧就系嗰个近水嘅位置啦。咁 part A 咧就要我哋 plot 翻个 graph 啦。咁如果你唔记得点样 plot graph 嘅话咧，咁就快啲睇翻全视技能呢条片啦。plot graph 之外啦，呢条题目咧其实都考我哋咧去分得清翻个因变项啦，同埋个独立变项嘅。咁今次啦，我哋 plot 完个 graph 啦，第一样要提大家嘅就系 plot 完我啲数据啊，记住用翻间尺去连接翻佢啦，就唔系徒手咧画曲线咁样画咗佢出嚟嘅。第二啦，就係頭先我講嘅 IV 同埋 DV 啦。今次嘅 DV 呢，就係呢兩款生物嘅數量嘅變化，而個 IV 呢。就係、是、喺個岩岸嘅唔同嘅距離啦。咁啊，因為我哋想睇下喺個岩岸嘅唔同嘅位置，究竟呢兩款生物嘅分布同埋個風度係如何嘅。咁啊，畫完啦 ，X Y S S 啦，咁我就爭個梯圖啦。咁啊，之前我哋喺全視技能嗰課都講過啦。寫梯圖呢係一個好簡單嘅方法嘅，就係、是、graph showing 一樣嘢，就係、是、一個題目係可以抄得到返嚟嘅。咁所以你今次啦，你要見得到呢就係 graph showing the distribution and the abundance of animal species A and B on a rocky shore。咁啊唔好忘記呢，都要抄返 on a rocky shore 啦，就唔可以慳皮懶呢，就唔寫後面嗰 part 嘅。咁但係呢，有一樣嘢想提大家嘅就係呢，好多同學呢。画完两条线之后呢，唔知做乜鬼就画咗两条线就指返落去个零呢度，即係指返落去个原点啊！咁但係实质啦，你係唔会知道喺个牙岸嘅零米係发生咩事嘅，因为你完全冇零米呢一个概念。咁当中啦，係咪冇生物存在呢？你又唔知道。咁所以啦，呢兩條紫色線呢，係多此一舉嘅。你畫咗嘅話，成幅圖呢就可以零分㗎啦。跟住啦，就到 Part B 啦。咁啊，用返呢你畫嘅嗰幅圖啦，就唔係就係睇 table 咯。就講下啦，兩款嘅生物 A 同埋 B 啦，邊一款呢係較為能夠抵禦得到或者忍受得到啦一個脱水冇水嘅情況嘅。咁而家你見到啦，紅色呢條線就係 Species A 啦，咁啊綠色就係 Species B 啦。咁你睇返個距離咯，一二三四五六七八。越系大数字嘅就系越近海嘛，咁越近海自不然越多水啦，系咪？咁你发现啦，喺啊 species B 咧，越近水咧就越多生物嘅，越离开嗰个岸边咧，喺个岩岸嘅最背脊嘅位置咧，就其实应该越少水噶嘛，就越少生物啊，冇乜水又冇乜生物，咁即系话佢都顶受唔到一个冇乜水嘅情况啦。咁但系红色 species A 就唔同咁讲法啦。越系离开个岸边嘅话呢，其实佢反而个数量咧系多一啲，尤其是你见到喺三米嘅时候，咁佢个数量咧系比起 species B 系多好多嘅。相反啦，佢去到越近海嘅话呢，反而佢数量又跌咗。嗱，你用翻图像嘅数据啦 ，species A 呢，原来系近翻个岩岸嘅后方嘅位置嘅，相比起 species B 嚟讲，岩岸嘅后半部啦，代表住咩意思呢？其实就系冇乜海水去 cover 住。亦即係冇乜水啦，咁既然冇乜水啦，而我哋又發現 species A， 咦又真係零舍多啲，喎。咁自不然啊，佢呢就能夠忍受到一個冇乜水嘅環境啦。跟住嚟到 Pass 啦，就要我哋描述下今次我哋呢個採樣嘅方法啦。咁啊，究竟啦，我哋喺呢個岩岸嗰樹點樣去數返 A 同 B 呢兩款生物嘅分布同埋個風度呢？係咪逐步逐步好似地氈式手殺咁樣去睇呢？咁未必嘅。咁啊，因為啦，我哋喺書本有學過嘅，就係、是、一個系統式嘅抽樣方法，就係、是、喺一個岩岸啦，或者一個草地啦，咩地方都好啦，咁啊咧就記錄返一隻生物嘅風度同埋個分布嘅變化。咁嗰時點樣做啊？書本呢係直接教咗你㗎啦，所以 ecosystem 呢一課呢，真係有溫書呢，一定有得著嘅。一開始啦，拉返條樣帶先啦，咁啊由個岩岸嘅後方拉到近水嘅位置。然後啦，再喺翻一個特定嘅距離底下放翻個陽方落去，放翻個 quadrant。然後啦，再睇一個陽方入面究竟係有幾多隻 A 同埋 B 嘅生物。咁數翻啦，哦，有十五隻，有廿八隻，有三十三隻。咁從而啦，你就有呢個 table 嘅出現啦。好，跟住啦，就嚟到一點出發嘅時間啦。成條題目咧就由岩岸去出發嘅。咁我哋第一樣要考你哋嘅就係作為一個生態研習啦。
作为科学探究嘅其中一款，究竟我哋点样取样嘅呢？头先讲嘅咧系系统取样法，有另一款咧就系随机嘅取样法，咁大家咧都系需要温下嘅。今次咧就系数个数量同埋度个距离啫。下次可能就系讲紧啦个温度啦、个湿度啦、个 pH 值啦、嗰啲海水嘅诶盐分嘅多与少啦。咁呢个咧我哋都要有办法咧去量度得到嘅。第二条路径啦就系有关于 port graph 啦，全视技能啦。咁究竟啦成个数据点样分 x y s s 咧？同埋啦，點樣運用數據，從而啦作出一個正確嘅推論呢？呢、這個呢，我哋都係要識嘅。Two one three paper one question eight is about the ecosystem, and actually we are doing the field trip in the rocky shore. See that we are investigating the distribution and the abundance of animal species A and B on the rocky shore. So what is the meaning of abundance? It means how many of those species A and B? In the rocky shore. And first of all, I would like to talk about the table. How can we understand the distance from the back of the shore? So that's the idea that there's the back of the shore, and then we put a maybe a transit from the back of the shore. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then for the eight meter, it will be the waterfront. So for part A, is asking us to plot a graph to show the results from the table. So if you think that you are not that familiar with the graph plotting, so watch the video. To learn it again, and then we need to determine the dependent variable and the independent variable. So first of all, we need to plot all the data on the graph. So remember that when you are plotting the graph, you need to use the ruler to join all the dots together to form the line, but not using your bare hand to draw a curve. And secondly, we need to determine the dv and iv. As well, I mentioned that the dv is the abundance of the species A and B because this data it depends on On the distance from the back of the shore, so that's why this part will be the IV. IV is in the x-axis, and the DV will be on the y-axis. And we also need the title. And as what I mentioned in the video of scientific skills, the title we can copy from the question, so you can see that the graph showing. The distribution and abundance of animal species A and B on a rocky shore, and there is one common mistake. Some students they extend the line to the origin, that means the zero in the graph. Actually, there is no such data in the table. You never see the zero meter in the table, so that's why we don't have such data, and we also don't know the number and the abundance of the species A and B in the table as well. And for part B, we need to use the graph we plot in part A, and then switch which species would have a higher tolerance to the condition without water desiccation. So first of all, you need to use the data, just like in Libro studies. So you can see that in in the graph, species A is found to be more abundant at the back of the shore. Than species B, so you can compare the three meter. Eight meter is the waterfront. So in three meter, that means a bit back region of the shore. We know that the back of the shore has a shorter period of time to be covered by the sea water. Therefore, the species A, the organism found at this region, is more likely to face the problem of desiccation. Therefore, it can be deduced that the species A has a higher tolerance of desiccation. In Part C, we need to briefly describe the sampling procedure in this scientific investigation. So, how can we gather the information of the abundance of species A and B? First of all, we need to recall the concept about the systematic sampling. That means we need to use it to record the changes in the abundance and distribution of species in a habitat where some sort of transition occur. So, firstly, we need to place a transect line from the back of the shore. To the waterfront, and then replace the quadrant along the transect line at irregular intervals, and finally we count the number of the species A and B in the quadrant and record for the result, and then we can make the table. So you can see that for part C is very straightforward question. Once you really do some revision from the book, especially for the sampling method, you must be able to answer this question. So for the curvature mapping, for this question, it starts from the rocky shore. So it's asking about the ecological study, and and it's regarded as the scientific investigation. It asks you about the sampling 
this time it asks you the systematic sampling and maybe next time it asks you the random sampling. And, and in this investigation, we are studying the distribution and abundance of the animal species A and B on a rocky shore. We are measuring the distance from the back of the shore. But maybe next time it may ask you about the pH value, the temperature, the humidity, and the salt concentration in the water sample. So you need to know how can we gather such information. Apart from the concept of scientific investigation, we also check you the skills about the graph plotting and then how can we use the data from the graph or from the table to do a deduction.